Hi, good morning and welcome. This is yoga for all of you and all of you, mind, body, spirit, and soul. I'm Sonia. I'm your yoga teacher, meditation instructor. I'm also a life coach and the author of several books. One of them is called The Soul Doesn't Need a Million Dollars. And the other one that I'll be reading from today is Connect to Soul Poems for Yoga. So I hope you enjoy this class. This is seated gentle chair yoga. It's adaptive. You got to honor your body and limitations. It's super gentle. We'll work on strengthening movement, balance, and making that connection to our breath. So you can use yoga for healing. That's what I did. And you can use yoga for your health. So I still use yoga to this day. I've been teaching for over 10 years. I've started this channel and hope that it'll help you get connected to your bodies and help with your healing and health. So thank you for joining me today. If you want to get notifications when my new videos will be out, just hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. So I am happy to be here teaching to you today. This is a morning, so I'm going to read an awakening poem. So before we start, I always like to start with a reading, a poem, or a quote. And today we'll be reading the arrival. It's the first poem in my book. You might want to close your eyes for this or just have a soft gaze. This is a centering poem. It's the practice of coming home to self and soul. Our arrival. Settling in and settling down. For sacred time, for soul time, we arrive. We come, land here, all the precious parts of ourselves. Body, bones, flesh, feelings, skins, shedding our outer skin. Head, heart, hands, hips, tired feet and stiff spines. We arrive. Heavy hearts, broken hearts, hurting hearts, burdened hearts, clouded minds, mixed minds, confused minds, cluttered minds, we come. Call to the mat, call to this practice, call to stillness. Called to silence, calling for peace. Our breathing changes as our bodies stop moving. From all the endless takeoffs, frenzied fast flights, crazy constant midair connections. We're connected for just this one second, minute, and moment. The one instant we decide to be fully present, to be fully here however we currently are in what other whatever state or shambles we arrive arriving is like landing we land our plane on the runway of our map we fly in we drop down we slow down enough to be able to stop then we drop in into ourselves and into ourselves and our yoga practice becomes a prayer of movement and motion. Guided from inside, our flight control tower is our inner teacher. What brought us here to the spiritual time out and time in? Did we need healing for the mind, body, spirit, or emotions? Something else or all of this? Stopped. We find our parched souls needing fuel, food, nutrients, nourishment, nurturance, strength, seeking sustenance. We take a breath in as we arrive. So take a deep breath in and arrive here in your practice. So we will begin in the chair. So please meet me in the chair for this practice. So welcome to chair yoga. You can put your feet on a block or a bolster if that helps. Get the knees up in line with your hips. Find a comfortable seat. Maybe move the fleshy part out to ground the sit bones. Find a neutral spine. Bring your head back up in line with your shoulders. And we'll begin with shoulder rolls. Inhale the shoulders up. 
and exhale them back and down. Inhale the shoulders up, exhale, roll them back and down. Feel yourself getting into your body before we set an intention. Before every yoga class, I like to set an intention. I think intention setting is really powerful. So you can keep rolling and massaging those shoulders. And then find your hands pressing at heart center, Anjali Mudra, prayer position. Bow your head and set an intention for today's practice. Knowing why you practice, knowing what it means for you. And then honor that intention with a deep breath in and out. On the exhale, bring the arms down, sweep them up. On the inhale, we're going to do some sun breaths. So these are seated chair sun breaths. Bring the hands down center line to heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms up and out. And exhale, hands down through center. So now you can let the head move with this while your hands come up, your head can come up or your eyes can come up, look up and then exhale. You can follow the head with the hands. Inhale, making it more dynamic. Inhale, head can go up, chin, eyes look up, exhale. Head can follow the hands down. Inhale, you can lean forward as you sweep up. Get a little bit more dynamic and then come to a nice tall Tadasana before you come down center line. Inhale, you can move forward. Hinge the body forward, flat back, reach up, come back to a seated Tadasana and exhale back to center. One more time, inhale, sweeping. Exhale, you're gonna float your left hand to your heart, your right hand to your belly. We're gonna do the three part Dirga breath. So find your breath under your hands, feel the body rise and fall, breathe into your hands. Expand this container and exhale, release. Breathe in, expand the container, feel it fill up and then exhale, feel yourself emptying. Breathe in what serves you, breathe out what doesn't serve you. Feel your body fill. Imagine it filling with light, energy, prana, love, and then exhale, empty out anything stale, stuck, or old. Breathing in, light and love, and maybe breathing out any fear. Feel your body fill and rise. Exhale like a balloon, it just slowly deflates. One more round of breath here. And now we're gonna use our breath for all of our yoga practice. So we won't do any breath retentions or holding, we'll breathe through. So on an inhale, open your arms up. Open up really wide, feel your wings expand, and then exhale, cross the right over the left. Give yourself a great big hug. You can drop your head, chin to the chest. Oh, and give yourself a pat on the back for showing up for yoga today. Maybe a little self-love, good for you. Coming all the way to the end of this module, but inhale, opening up. Exhale, the left arm on top. Again, give yourself a pat on the back. So for anything that you've accomplished that was hard or challenging, anything you've completed, any good works you're doing, maybe give yourself a little hug and a little rock side to side. It's really important that you love yourself through your practice. Honor yourself, any limitations, take care of yourself. This isn't competition. You don't want to compete with an old version of yourself either. You want to do what you can and let your yoga move. Inhale, opening up. Exhale, float the arms down. We're going to make these arms wings. Inhale, sweep them up, palms up. Exhale, bring them down. Inhale, sweep the arms up, palms up. Now flip the palms and exhale, press them down like eagle's wings. Good. Inhale up flip the palms up you can let the chin rise and fall exhale 
Bring them down. Back to the shoulders. Inhale, shoulders up. Roll them back and down. Make some fists with your hands. Squeeze the shoulders high. Exhale, roll them back and down. Inhale, roll them up. Exhale, back and down. One more. Just feel your spine coming into neutral alignment. Feel your stomach engaging the muscles that keep your spine nice and tall. We'll do a little bit of joint warm up. So we'll take our hands and we'll start making figure eights. So you're gonna make a blade with your hands, figure eights. These are gonna get bigger, so start really small. You feel your wrists warming up. See if you can do them together because now we're gonna bring the elbows into this warm up. Figure eights, they go down and dive in and out. So if you think this is exactly the way the wings of a um, hummingbird work, they make a figure eight and they're able to go so fast. So you're gonna grow this figure eight and make it larger. So dive them down, the palms face each other, then they flip and they come back out and up. Make them larger. Yeah. Diving down, back and up. Diving down, back and up. Diving down. Back and up. Bring your hands right to your hips. We're going to extend one leg out in front. We're going to spiral the ankle. Go ahead and spiral that foot in and out. Now you want to make sure you don't end up leaning or sinking back. Hold a nice neutral tall spine. You might hear some noises, some rice krispies of the body. Snap, crackle, pop coming out. And switch to the other leg. Flex that foot at first and spiral. Good, we're just warming up all our extremities. Good, if you're on some blocks or a bolster, you can push that to the side. We're gonna extend one leg out and then bring it back down and switch. Extend, so we're warming up the knee and switch. We're just saying hello to the knee, waking up the knee. Hello to the other knee, waking up the knee. Now notice how you've got to pull your belly button into your spine to hold this so that you don't sink or slouch. So you're going to have to use some muscle here to bend the knee and straighten. Let's move this into a bicycle. So let the knee come up and then bicycle it out and back down. Other knee. Knee comes up. Bicycle it out and back down. We're switching. Knee comes up. Bicycle it out and back down. Knee comes up. Bicycle it out and back down. Again, you can feel this now warming into the hips. Notice if you're slouching, pull yourself nice and strong. Now for the hard part, reverse bike. So you start out, bring the knee up and then back down. Start out with the other leg, bring the knee up and back down. Reverse bike. See if you can find a fluid motion that you can keep going nice and smooth. Warming up those knees, you'll start feeling it. Good, we're gonna do a seated balancing pose. So first let's extend both out and then down. So I find the hands on the hips or the hands on the chair, you can make any adjustments. If you only can do one leg at a time, that's totally fine, you do not have to do both. But our goal will be for both, and if you need the stability of holding the chair, you can hold the chair. So our goal is for both, or you wanna really challenge your core, you can hold onto the hips and pull the belly tight. Extending both and then down, give it a little release. Extending both and then down now, we're going for the balance. Extend both out and extend the arms out, palms face each other, keep your shoulders over your hips and breathe. Breathe in this balancing, feel the muscles warm. And then bring the feet down and the arms up, seated to dasana. Let this be a resting pose and say, ah, open the arms. Inhale, bring the arms back up. We're going to open the arms and say, ah. You should feel that warming in the body. Inhale, bring the arms back up. Exhale, ah. 
We're going to do a human rocking chair. So move your sit bones a little bit closer to the front edge of the chair and bring your ankles right underneath your knees. Your hands will be on your thighs to support you and you just rock forward with a flat back and then come back to the shoulders over the hips. Rock forward and come back. Keeping the spine nice and tall in line, rock forward and back. Now you can bring this into your feet. Rock forward up onto the toes, rock back up onto your heels. Forward up onto the toes, make it a little bit more dynamic so you're massaging the bottom of your feet. Rock forward and up. Rock forward. Inhale up. See if we can connect the breath. Inhale and exhale. Back to inhale straight up. Exhale as we come forward. Inhale as we come up. Good. Inhale to neutral. Open up the knees. Now, if you get dizzy, this isn't the one to do. So um, you can do something else. If you get dizzy at all, you want to do something very still. And But if you're okay with doing a churning, bring your hands to your hips. We're going to bring the, the torso forward and then around to the side, around to the back, around to the other side. It's a big spiral circle. So inhale around and forward. Exhale around and back. Inhale around and forward. Feel yourself warming up in the waist. Inhale around and forward. Exhale around and back. Connect your breath. So see if you could slow down your breath and slow down the movement. That you're really connected to your breath. And you're really lubricating the hips, warming up the spine. And these can be as big or as small. And then to balance out our bodies, stop in center and start going the other way. You might want to feel this as a, a churning up of prana or energy. We, they used to think, the ancient yogis believed there was an energy located right at that tailbone base of the spine. So you might want to think about churning up and activating that energy. They thought it was like a serpent that would go straight up the spine, side to side, the cords wrapping around. Feel about churning up that energy for today's class. Good, and then stopping at center. Bring the knees about hip width. We're just gonna windshield wiper the knees side to side. We're still trying to warm up that joint right in there, seated. Windshield wiper the knees side to side. Good, and then spread the knees open again. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, we're gonna cross to one side and touch. Yeah, bring it up. Exhale, cross to the other side and touch. Good, inhale, so these are cactus arms. This is strengthening for the upper body. Exhale, it's a gentle twist to a touch. Inhale, coming up, gentle twist to a touch. Inhale, feel yourself really strengthening your posture when you come up to cactus arms and then gentle twist to touch. Inhale now, if you're advanced, you can go to the knee. Inhale, you can make this more dynamic. You can go to the shin. Inhale, your level, your pace. If this is too hard, I'll give you an option. Pull the knees about hip width and you're gonna slide one hand down a knee and switch. So this is a gentle twist for the lumbar. You'll feel it down in the low back and you're just sliding and twisting. One hand slides to the knee, the other hand slides to the hip. So inhale when you're centered, exhale as you twist. Inhale as you're centered, exhale as you twist. Inhale as you're centered, exhale as you twist. Good, coming to center. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Overhead, we're just gonna neutralize the spine with three sun breaths. So from that twisting, we're gonna straighten out the spine. Inhale, sweeping those sun breaths back up, down to center. One more, inhale, sweeping. Exhale, that neutralizes spine from twist. They always try to do that. So 
Inhale the arms back out, remember your wingspan. Exhale, one arm down, other arm up and over for a side stretch. Now it's important that you get both sit bones grounded and you arc over just for where you feel is safe. If you need to hold the chair so you don't go too far, if you've got really strong abdominals or you're working on your side abdominals, you can put your hand on your hip and really activate them. So you're not only feeling a stretch, but you're also strengthening. Inhale, come up. Exhale, other side. So it can be hand on the hip for the challenge, hand on the chair for support. Breathe as you're holding this. So you don't want to be holding your breath in this stretch. You want to be breathing. See if you can do that breathing that goes down into your belly. Now we're going to let our yoga move. So inhale, coming up. Exhale, over to one side. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, over to one side. So if you've got a sore shoulder and you just need to bring your hand to your hip, and go side to side, that's an option too. Another option is to bring your hands to your shoulders and just point one elbow up to the ceiling at a time. So take care of your body, whatever you need to do. If side to side doesn't work for you, you're welcome to just slide the hands forward or modify, do any other version of the poses and uh, motions that we've already done. Good. And then release and relax. Do those shoulder rolls. Inhale up, back and down, release. Inhale up, back and down, and release. Inhale up, back and down, and release. Inhale, we're going to open the knees again. So lift the heels up and lower. Lift the heels up and lower. We're going to do our first forward fold. Now, if coming forward is a challenge and you need to bring your bolster or your blocks in front to touch that on any height you need to so that if you can't touch the floor, just think about what you might need out in front to do your first forward fold. So I like to start with a flat back, leaning forward with a flat back, keep the head and neck in line with the spine, hold that and do a fly, pressing into the toes. If it's available, you can touch down to a bolster or a block. And if it's okay and safe for your spine, you can exhale, fold and round and release and say, ah. You can let that ha breath come right out of the mouth. If you're in a forward fold, just say, ha. Now we're going to stack the spine, so press into the tailbone and roll the spine up like a string of pearls and you're going to rag down, roll yourself up slowly back to seated so that the head and shoulders are last, press the knees together, inhale shoulders up, exhale them back and down, sun breath sweep, feel your spine come back into alignment, exhale, hands down, bring, interlace your fingers, bring your hands to your heart. Maybe scoot yourself a little bit forward on the chair. So inhale, we're going to lift our, our torso, lift our sternum into our heart. Exhale, flip the palms and gently press them away and round through the spine. So you don't have to go very far. You don't have to do an, a full version. It can be just a little bit. So protect your spine. And then inhale, lift back up and exhale pressing away you can tuck the chin inhale lifting your heart back up into your hands you're going to feel that lift drop the shoulders relax them down and then exhale press away inhale lifting up heart into the hands so we've done all six motions of the spine now that's our warm-up inhale lift and then exhale, press away. You might want to hold this last press. Some people like to extend one foot, then the other foot, just add some more movement to this press. Still breathing. Good, from this press, lift up slowly. See if you can lift all the way up. Release the hands into seated Tadasana, mountain pose. Hold this pose. So now your upper body should be really strong. You should ground it in your feet. Feel your sit bones grounded in your chair. 
Relax the shoulders down, bring the head back in line with um, the spine. Breathing in Tadasana, you want to feel this as strength. So inhale, you're going to squeeze the fist and exhale, you're going to pull it down and go ha. Come, swing the arms back up, make a fist, pull them down and go ha. Inhale, sweep the arms up, bring it down and out through the mouth, ha. There you go. Inhale, bring them up. Exhale, ha. You're going to pull the power in you need for the day. Inhale through the nose. Swing it up. Exhale through the mouth. Ha. One more. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth and hold. Ha. Squeeze. You want to feel those arms squeezed by the body. Squeeze your fists. And then exhale, release. So we're going to hinge forward. If you need to hold your hands on your thighs to do a flat back forward, or let yourself slide your hands all the way down to touch your ankles or touch the toes. This is a forward fold release and just let yourself hang out there. And you want to feel like all your cares and all your stress are just beating off your back like water off a duck's back. Imagine it just dripping through your hair, out the ends of the hair, all your stress. Open your mouth and go, ha, ah, so you're not holding any jaw tension. And then slowly, starting with the base of your spine, rolling up. Remember, like a string of pearls, you're going to roll up slowly, hanging the upper body like a rag doll, so that your shoulders and head are last to come up. When you get all the way up, inhale the shoulders up to the ears, exhale them back and down. Sun breath sweep. Exhale, hands to the heart. All right, we're ready for standing. So you can bring one foot back and hold onto the chair with the foot that's back with the hand. One hand forward, and you can push yourself up to standing. Good. We'll come to use the high back of the chair. So bring the chair out in front. We'll open up the feet at first and spiral the hips. So if you don't need the chair for stability, you can do hands on your hips. If you get dizzy at all, you can hold the chair. Feel that churning. And then have them go the other way. Then we're gonna do a little standing twist. So you can twist to one side holding the chair and then twist to the other side holding the chair, or you can let the arms fly and float over the chair and wrap around the body. So arms can float and wrap, float and wrap, or hold and hold. So if you can turn your head, you can turn your head. If that's not safe to do, just keep your head in line with your spine. Feel yourself just warming up. Good. Feet are about hip width now. We're going to rise up, lift the heels, and then lower back down. So we lift the heels, inhale, exhale, lower back down, strengthening those already warmed up ankles. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. So if you want to challenge yourself, lift your hands while you lift your heels. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. The next one, we're going to inhale, lift, and hold. So if you can't hold this on your own, you can hold with one hand on the chair so that your heels stay lifted. Squeeze the buttocks so you're really activating and squeezing the thighs and the legs. Make sure you're not leaning forward, that your shoulders are over your hips. If you're holding onto the chair, you can switch hands. Exhale, release, walk, bring your forearms to the chair, walk back a little bit and bend one knee at a time and just massage those ankles and calf muscles. And you can say, ha. Ah. 
you want to release any of the stress that comes up, like a steam valve. You want it to just release through your mouth and breathe out the stress. <sighs> Slowly walking your way back up. Bring the feet wide again. We're going to go for a side stretch. Arm comes out and over to one side. It doesn't matter which side, we do both. If your arm hurts, if you've got any shoulder injuries, you can bring your hand to your shoulder, just pointing the elbow towards the ceiling, or hand down to the hip. Inhale, open and up. Other side, you can hold the chair for balance or hand on the hip, if you really are working for better balance. Remember, you can make any modifications or adjustments you need so that this is comfortable and doable for you. And then inhale back up to center, inhale, sun breath sweep. We're going to neutralize the spine, exhale, hands to heart. Turn the toes out. We're coming into a little goddess uh, squat. And you want to make sure your knees are, are tracking over your toes. So knees are not in, they're not out. They're tracking over your toes. So if you've got to adjust your toes, adjust your toes. So that your knees go right over your toes. Now you can hold the chair and feel yourself going down and up. Down and up. If you don't need the chair, hands can be on the hips. Down and up. If you want to make this harder, <laughs> it's cactus arms bend, straighten the arms, palms touch overhead, exhale, goddess pose, inhale, straighten the arms, palms touch overhead, or just hold the chair, depending on how much you want to do, try to bring those arms to, elbows to a 90 degree angle, and then straighten palms touch. Again, you could be holding the chair to do this. Good, and then turn the toes forward and tick-tock the hips. So toes are now forward and we're releasing the hips. Tick-tock the hips side to side. We're gonna do Ukatasana. So feet are now hip width, toes pointing forward. And we're gonna pretend to sit back in the chair, but no, we don't, we come back up. So we're gonna sit back in the chair no, not really. We're going to come back up. Again, we're going to try to keep our knees over our ankles. So we're not so much bending at the knees. We're sitting back, bending at the hip creases and coming up. Option are to hold the chair as you try to sit back, bend at the hip creases. Or sitting back, holding Ukatasana, arms can be out, breathing or or arms can be up by your ears, adding more heat. So this is less heat, this is mild heat, more, and even more. Now on an inhale, straighten the legs, straighten the arms all the way up, and exhale. This is going to be a reverse sun breath. Inhale through the nose, palms go straight up, exhale through the mouth, Reverse sun breath, like a flower opening and blooming. Inhale, up, exhale through the mouth as you pop the arms open. One more, inhale, exhale, good, you're ready for your first modified down dog. So holding the high back of the chair, you can walk away from the chair to get a nice long straight spine. Or you can be on your forearms and walk yourself back to a nice straight spine. So find what version of down dog you would like to do in the chair. So you don't have to go as far down. If you can't bring your head um, lower than your heart, you can do a little bit of a stretch. You want to feel this not just in straightening the spine, but also the hamstrings. So wherever you are, bend and straighten the legs. Bend and straighten the legs. Bend and straighten. You can pass.
pedal out the feet or walk the knees, bend one knee at a time. Really feel that stretch. And then slowly to counter this, we're going to walk up, press the hips a little bit forward, bring the elbows a little bit back. It's like a standing sphinx pose, so you're here, but you're pressing the hips forward, giving yourself a little back bend from all those forward folds. Pressing those hips a little bit forward, or they can touch the chair. And release. Good. Step your right foot in the center of the chair, left foot back at an angle. Bend that front knee over the ankle. Inhale, sweep the arms up for a warrior one, or hold the chair for balance. Feel that warrior one. Breathe. Strong in the legs. Exhale, we're going to open a warrior two, so that front arm comes down, holds the chair, back arm comes out. Spin the hips open, spin that back foot towards the front, and you can hold this for warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, or float the other arm up. Nice straight arms. Knee stays bent over the ankle. Back leg is straight. Breathe. Virabhadrasana two. Holding the chair, sweep that back arm down, turn those back toes forward, come back to warrior one. If you want to challenge, you can lift that back heel in warrior one. So toes would track forward to lift the back heel. And then exhale, step forward and slowly walk it back to down dog. When you're in down dog, wag the tail right and left just to release the back. Maybe pedal out the feet. We're heading towards the other side. So you can stay right where you are. I'm just going to move my chair. Step the other foot forward. Bend the knee over the ankle. Back foot's on an angle. Foot is firmly planted. Inhale up. Warrior one. If you need balance, you need the support of the chair, hold the chair. It doesn't have to be a wide warrior one. It can be a smaller stance. Find what's comfortable for you and your body. Breathing and balancing, warrior one. This is a power pose. So let's do that same fist. Inhale, make a fist. Exhale, go ha. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Make a fist. Pull the power down and in and go ha. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Ha. Again, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Ha. Good. We're going to open up to warrior two, so you can hold on to the chair with one hand, spin the back toes forward, front knee stays bent, and you can hold that chair or release the chair. Warrior two. Turn the palms up. Turn the palms down. Turn the palms up. Make sure your knee is over your ankle and it's not bending forward. So if you've got a back up, straighten that front leg a little bit. That's good. Good. And then holding the chair, sweep that back arm and the back toes sweep forward. Come up onto the heel if you're going to challenge yourself. Both toes point forward, back heels lifted, warrior one. On an exhale, lean forward, step forward, and then walk yourself back to a modified down dog. And say, ha. Ah. You can again wag your tail right and left to release. Bend one knee at a time. You don't have to drop the head. If you get dizzy, keep your head a little bit higher than the heart. To counter that, we're going to walk forward to the chair, press the hips a little bit forward. This is like cobra. Some people like to bring their hands to their back, palms, fingers down, palms pressing into the uh, line of the, like the belt line, elbows squeezing back to help lift. You could just hold the chair and press the hips forward. Good, and release. Now shake everything out. We're gonna do just a balancing pose or two. So ground into the, the foot that's closest to the chair. 
peel the other toes out to the side up to the ankle. So this would be level one. Then we're going in for tree pose, brick chest. And this would be level two. And if you're helping the foot all the way up into the thigh for level three, you can do level three. You choose, but we're skipping over the knee. We're not gonna press our heel into that knee joint. So press firmly down into the foot so that you lift up out of the hip. And then you can inhale one arm up, holding the chair for balance or both. You choose. Tree pose. It's much harder to bring your hands out to the sides. Hands can be at the heart center. Hands can be on the hips. Arms can be extended. And to come out of this, bring the hands up overhead, point the knee forward, slide everything down and bend. We're gonna do smooth transition. So you don't wanna fall in and out of every pose. We'll do the other side. So foot closest to the chair, grounds down. Other foot turns out to the side. This is level one. Level two, or helping it all the way up to level three. So you choose. We're just going to skip over that knee. We're not going to push our foot into that knee. So the way to really make this side solid is to press down into that foot so that you lift up out of that hip. Find the placement. Find your balance. Now find a focal point. We call it drishti. You look at that. Find that. Soften your gaze, relax your shoulders, squeeze the back body, squeeze the legs. We're not gonna fall in and out of the pose, so if you find yourself wobbly, it's better to hold the chair and just let that leg heat up and warm and strengthen. And then to release, bring the arms up overhead, point the knee forward, bend as you come down and out and release, shake it out. Good work, let's do one more down dog to just release what we did in the hips. So modify down dog, either forearms on the chair, if your wrists are sensitive, or holding the chair and walking it back to a nice straight spine. Breathe, there's so many options that we can do. You can make this more dynamic. You could stay right where you are if it feels really good. If you want to do something more, you can bring the feet wide, a wide-legged down dog. Bring your right hand to your left knee and replace. Left hand to the right knee and replace. So this is like a shoulder strengthener. Down and replace. Across and replace. Breathe. Good, tic-tac the hips and slowly get them walking back up. Counter that with your standing sphinx pose. Holding the chair, elbows are gonna tuck by your side, hips press forward. Now you're gonna look where the ceiling meets the wall. That's your gaze. Chin comes up, chest opens, puffs out a little bit. And then exhale, release. Good, we're gonna come down to the floor. If you can't come down to the floor to do some floor exercises and last poses in Shavasana, you're welcome to make your chair your last place. So you can grab a bolster for your feet or you're welcome to come all the way down onto the floor. Your choice. So Shavasana is like a 15 minute deep relaxation at the end of yoga class. You can really enjoy integrating all the benefits, strengthening, stretching, breathing, moving. If you want, you can just lean back into your chair, pretend it's the floor, support your feet on blocks a bolster or pillows. You can put pillows behind you, make yourself comfortable. And you want to maybe move a little bit as you wind down and cool down. So a little rocking is 
helpful for cooling down. You might hug the knees in and rock side to side on the floor, rolling out your back. In the chair, you can rock and roll your back into the back of the chair. You want to scan your body from head to toe for any tension. You can do a little body scan, breathing in, scanning yourself from head to toe for anything that you can release. If you want to get warm or feel a little supported, you can bring a pillow to your belly or a blanket to cover you. If you have an eye pillow, that's great for blocking out the light. If you feel you've lost connection with your breath, you can bring your hands to your belly and find and feel your breath. Taking those deep breaths. So deep breath in for one and out. Deep breath in for two and out. Deep breath in for three and out. Feel yourself fully supported on the chair or the floor. Imagine that the chair or the floor are coming up to support you so that you can let go of all your muscles, feel head held, and let your body feel heavy. And we've been practicing breathing out through our mouths and releasing, so breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth and just say, ha. Ah. Let any last stress release out. So close your eyes if that feels safe for you or just have a soft gaze. I like to end with another poem from my book. This one's called Listening at the Well. And this is a poem for deep soul listening and transformation. Imagine walking into a beautiful, sacred forest, unescorted by yourself. You come upon a well, hidden in a soft forest fog. A well that only you could find alone. You look down and there's water, clear, pure water, the water of your soul. Find stillness, find your steadiness and drop a pebble into the well. Then listen for silence. Carefully, gently hover over the edge. Look down into its depths. Drop another pebble into the well. See the ripples of thought smooth out. You thirst for this water. It's the water of life. Your mind, body, spirit are comprised of this water from this inner well. You're supplied from underground, from somewhere underneath, although you can't see it. It pours into you daily, and you drink. Stand there, stay there. Just a moment more. Allow yourself to go deep. Feel its depths. This undercurrent of mysterious waters. Take a breath. A drink of water. Drop a last pebble into the well and listen. 
With sincerity, float your hands to your heart and say to yourself, I am listening. I am listening. I am listening. Take a deep breath and listen. Listen to whatever you hear, even if it's silence. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Gently wiggle, wiggle your fingers and toes awake. Maybe spiral the ankles and the wrists. And stretch your arms up overhead. Give yourself a yawn, awakening yawn. Wiggle your jaw at the top of the yawn. <sighs> If you're on the floor, you can rock your knees side to side, bringing the knees into your chest and rolling from side to side. If you're in the chair, just rocking side to side. You might roll over to one side and press yourself up to any comfortable seated position. And just notice how you feel. Then remember your intention that you set at the beginning of this practice. Maybe float your hands to heart center. Remembering your intention, honoring this class completed. Taking a deep full breath in and out. We'll end our class with the sound of OM. You can join in or just listen, breathe in. Um. Thank you for practicing your yoga with me. Namaste. I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for practicing with me. If you did this whole practice, would you put a comment down in the description and say, practice completed, and give me two things that you really enjoyed about today's chair yoga practice. Maybe give me one tip for something you'd like to see in the future in terms of a practice. 
I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to give this a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like some more gentle chair yoga videos. So this was a longer practice. Be sure to find my 15 minute and seven minute videos so that you could be doing chair yoga every week or every day, and it's easy and gentle and safe for your body. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in another video. Take care. Look in the bottom description for the links to my books available on Amazon and my Facebook groups. And you can find me and my groups on Facebook. Love to hear from you. Love to connect. Thank you so much for watching.